of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends out a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Blessed Trinity, one holy and living God. Amen. Please be seated. Ah, back to school. What a blessed time of year, now that I'm not teaching. <laughs> a time when we hold the excitement of new beginnings in tension with all of the anxieties that come with putting our children out into the world. If commercials are to be believed, this should be a time of celebration for parents. But our realities tell us to hold off on doing the happy dance. It's an overwhelming and often disappointing and dangerous world out there. And we can't always shield our kids from that. My family will confirm for you that I am a worrier. Now, I used to worry about that, about worrying too much. I used to worry about worrying too much. But now I embrace this about myself and have decided to simply wear my worry like an accessory that goes so well with my shoes, right? And I have cried plenty. I have cried plenty on behalf of my children. Still do, and they're all adults. Interestingly, over the years, my tears have turned into prayers. Prayers of protection for my children and prayers of reception as well, that they would receive what they need for this day. What I discovered is that the prayers, although aimed at my kids, were really about my being able to trust God. A faith formation milestone for me was figuring out that the maternal feelings I was having about letting my kids go is what God must feel for humanity when we are born. God, the psalmist promises us today, loved us, formed us, knit us together in our mother's womb, and then let us go maybe even with some tears. We share our children with God. And this is no small act of trust on God's part. 
we would do well to remember that and to remember God's part in our own creation and in the creation of our children. We often refer to God as the creator, especially as we celebrate the season of creation. It's a nice gender neutral job specific image, but even as we use it, we need to be reminded like Jeremiah reminded the house of Israel that God is still creating, still actively forming us into new potential like clay in the potter's hand. I just, I just love that image. And I love that all it takes to reform a mistake or smooth some rough edges in clay is water. It's just like baptism. Think about it. This is good sacramental theology going on here in Jeremiah. God, the creator, the potter, is intervening in our brokenness and forming us into another vessel. Isn't that wonderful? This message from Jeremiah is not as harsh as it sounds, and I love formation exactly because of this image of being clay in God's hands. Faith formation or education is a process. We are a work in progress. We are practicing Christians. We are Christians who practice, right? And we are not done at baptism. We simply received the necessary water to be formed into something new, and we will rest in God's hands and be worked and reworked and formed and reformed all of our earthly journey. And being intentional about our formation or education is how we learn and grow as Christians and become mature practitioners of our faith. As St. Paul said to the church in Corinth, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When our, when our oldest son was in elementary school, we used to refer to him, don't judge me, <laughs> We used to refer to him as Captain Literal <laughs> because we're mean <laughs> and, and <laughs> because he was, very, he was such a rigid little thinker <laughs> and had a difficult time grasping hyperbole, metaphor, allegory, and parable. And not for nothing, these are literary styles used in the Bible. But as he got older, he continued to study and learn and grow and has become, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> both an avid, despite me, yeah, <laughs> he has become both an avid reader and a master storyteller. Very appreciative of a good double entendre and unfortunately puns. But I blame Blaine for that. Anyway, my point is, what if he hadn't been encouraged to learn beyond just knowing how to say the words? What if he had never matured into a deeper understanding of their meaning? He would have missed out, for one, on all of my fabulous sarcasm. So much would be diminished, right? And yet, we often allow that to happen with our spiritual learning, stunting our growth as Christians. And there are consequences to an immature or stagnant faith. Biblical literalism and taking verses out of context without the curiosity to know more about the fullness of God's love for us has been responsible for much of the world's horrors, such as misogyny, 
racism and slavery, anti-Semitism and the Holocaust, Islamophobia and the Crusades, the doctrine of discovery and the, and the genocide of indigenous peoples, queer phobia and the sanctioning of discrimination, bullying and murder. There's also the exploitation and decimation of the earth and her resources. And don't even get me started about Christian nationalism. Too late, I'm ranting. <laughs> we can't be disciples and pick up our cross as Christ demands of us if our hands are full. Is this not correct, Deacon Jenny? You held the cross coming in here. Could you carry the flag at the same time? No, you cannot carry the flag at the same time. Settle down, Jean. <laughs> Holding on to both the cross and the flag is proving to be very, very dangerous. Discipleship, Jesus warns us, comes at a cost, but compared to the cost of not fully committing ourselves to the way of the cross and growing in our faith, well, as a society, haven't we already paid too high a price for that? Faith formation is very important, dear siblings in Christ. And it starts here on Sunday mornings in our worship together. So thank you for being here. I know it is not easy. But everything that happens here equips us for ministry. In our families, in our community, and it sustains us in ways that nothing else can. But for most Christians, myself included, that means making difficult decisions about our priorities on a regular basis because time is short and demands are many. There's a cost to discipleship. We have to give stuff up. And it's going to be a struggle. Jesus is certainly not mincing words in this text. Get ready for battle, he says, because we are in for some culture wars. And from what the trends are showing, it's a battle for our time. I'll say it again. We can't be disciples and pick up our cross as Christ demands of us if our hands are full. And I have to remind myself so I'll remind you along with me. Being too busy, being too busy, is not a virtue. It's a crisis of faith. And among other things, a crisis in our overall well-being. When we are not stressed, we're exhausted. In the workplace, Employees now are trying to do differently, setting healthy boundaries for themselves and for their efforts. They're being demonized as quitters. Quiet quitters, but quitters nonetheless. Work harder, work more. Headlines to ponder before Labor Day tomorrow, yes? Being a disciple is a struggle, not gonna lie. It's hard, it's hard, but we are not in it alone. Together we can help change the narrative. We can support one another in drawing some Sabbath lines in the sand for ourselves and for our children and stand firm it can be done. Remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy is a choice we've forgotten we had. It's a promise we've forgotten we've made in our baptismal covenant. It's a commandment we've forgotten to keep. But God has not forgotten us. 
and is still actively forming us into new potential. Our God of all creation is still creating within us and through us. So let's take a deep breath. Say a prayer. Maybe shed a tear. Learn something new about the vastness of God's mercy and love. And then do something different. As clay in the potter's hands, let us be formed and reformed into the image of the one who made us.